morning. It's me, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. So we're going to work through another letter of the alphabet. V is for vision. I say again, V is for vision. Really, it's the only letter I could come up with right off the top of head that would have anything to do with vision, V, stroke, right? Or brain injury. Um, I'm just going to press this, press this, this episode by stating I'm not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. I'm not licensed in any state, province, or country, territory, or region um, by any government anywhere um, to be a doctor. So, if you feel the need to consult your doctor, please do so. Uh, I'm going to say that if you believe you're having some type of stroke or brain injury related vision issues, you need to engage your clinical team be it your occupational therapist, be it your physiotherapist, be it your general practitioner, your neurologist, uh, your normal eye doctor you would see on your yearly, or a special eye doctor you've been referred to that deals specifically with brain neurology, brain, brain structure, <coughs> vision issues, post-stroke, concussion, brain injury. So there's a bunch of issues you may have, right, or may not have. And this is all completely dependent on, A, what type of stroke did you have? Was it ischemic or hemorrhagic, right? How devastating was that stroke? Um, what part of your thinker was impacted? Was it left brain, right brain? Was it brain stem, mid brain? You know, was it front brain, middle brain, rear brain, right? And what part of the thinker was impacted by your stroke? So that being said, if you've had uh, a fairly healthy size stroke, Vision issues may be an issue, um, and these vision issues may create other problems, such as you, you know, you're going to lose the ability to drive. Right? Um, you're going to lose some of your self autonomy. So you may have uh, visual field loss. You may have eye movement problems. You may have visual processing problems. You may have other issues, and we'll get in just a few of these. So the first one is visual field loss. Well, first, let's just define a term. What is a visual field? Visual field is everything you can see from the center line out to where your hands disappear, your total peripheral. Now, with vision field loss, it's not an issue with how the eyes function. It has nothing to do with how the eyes are functioning. Generally speaking, the eyes should be working normally without any major deficits. However, where the issue does lie is how the brain is receiving and interpolating the information that's coming from the eyes. The brain is basically just telling the eyes, yeah, I, I'm going to ignore that part of that visual field, uh, that whole section over there, it doesn't need to exist, right? You then have other issues, right? Um, now, how do you know do you have visual field loss? Well, one, you're going to have like a blank spot, right? Um, it may be left-sided, so from, you know, center line over, or it might be a portion of the peripheral, it might be a center spot, right? You're gonna notice that your world is different visually, right? It can be treated, right? It has to be assessed by the right medical team uh, and practitioners to make sure that it is what it is. And then definitely there are some treatments for that, right? So just because you have visual field loss does not mean you, uh, you know, have to worry about it, right? It is something that may be life impacting, yeah, but it's not something that's completely untreatable, right? And it all depends on, you know, how your stroke has impacted you, how your vision field loss will impact you, right? Now, you may have uh, things that may be impacting other issues. Right? You may have something that is called, let me just get it up here, visual hallucinations, right? Um, now, some people with visual field loss see things that aren't actually in your blind spot, right? Known as visual hallucinations. So if you have visual field loss, right, you may notice sort of artifacts that are in your blind spot uh, that aren't actually there. Some of it may have to do with a retinal issue, right? Um, occasionally, loss of central vision is due to a type of stroke that's impacting your retina, right? So uh, it's called retinal vessel occlusion. Uh, it happens when there's a blockage to one of the vessels or blood vessels to your eye um, in the retinal artery, 
right? So for some of you that may have retinal related issues after your stroke, again, that is something for you and your uh, eye, eye doctor to take a look at, your neurologist to take a look at, determine what's the best way to resolve that for you. Eye movement problems. Now, you may have a problem with eye movement, right? Um, you may have impaired eye movement. You may have jerky eye movement. You may have eyes that do not want to return back to center, right? So there's a couple of different issues that may come out, right, due to the stroke. Now, basically, depending on how your eye movements are impaired will depend upon how, again, that's going to impact your world. So you may have an issue where both eyes are not synchronized. They're not moving together. So it's kind of like that, right? They move independently of each other and not as a unit. So there in and of itself can create possible blur, uh, possible double vision, shadows and artifacts. You may have to squint, right? So for people that have you know, various double vision issues, that might be one of them. Another one you might experience is your eyes are constantly moving or wobble, right? So it's hard to focus. Um, again, this might cause double vision, so there's a second reason why you might have double vision after a stroke, right? Um, so another thing that might happen is you might have a depth perception issue, right? Um, so you go to make a cup of tea, go to make a cup of coffee, right? And you put the cup down on the counter and then you bring the kettle over and you misjudge where you need to pour. Right? Instead of pouring hot water into the cup, you've now spilt it down your hand, on the floor, what have you. Right? Now, the, eye, the wobbly eye, right? Depth perception um, and both eyes not moving well together, right? They are treatable. Right? So again, these are situations that are going to present themselves post-stroke that they are treatable. Um, the exact level of outcome you will have will depend on a lot of factors. And again, I'm not a doctor, never claimed to be a doctor. I can just read well off stuff off the internet. Right? Um, and a lot of, like today's video was thought up because of someone I ran into yesterday um, who has a brain injury, didn't know this individual, <clears throat> and uh, they have double vision. Right? So you may have to use prism glasses. You may have to use an eye patch. They may give you glasses that are shaded, right? There's many reasons uh, that you may have the issues. And because of that, there may be many treatment methods they might want to try to fix that, right? Now, other visual problems you might encounter uh, could be things such as visual neglect, right? Um, you're unaware of your surroundings on one side of your body. So it's not like the visual field issue where there's a certain part in your vision space that the brain just wants to ignore. This is, you know, I've had a left brain stroke, so I've forgotten the right side of my body exists. Or, you know, you just become spatially unaware, right? Uh, basically, you don't want to recognize anything from here over exists. So, you know, that, and that could be bumping into things, could be walking into doors, it could be issues with dressing, um, you know. That's more common with a right-sided stroke than a left-sided left, left stroke. So if you've had a right brain stroke, uh, it's more common to have that issue, right? Now, the ultimate perfect storm is when you get vision field loss and neglect at the same time or to use the big uh, funky word, simultaneous, maybe comorbid, dual diagnosis, pick a word. Um, so you may find that you may have visual field loss and visual neglect simultaneously. And I can only imagine, and I mean imagine, how disrupting that's going to be, right? Because now I've got a portion of my field of vision that my brain refuses to recognize and then I've got a portion of my body, wherever that is, that my brain doesn't want to recognize. So if you have um, visual neglect and or a uh, loss of field of vision, you need to make sure that you take extra care 
in doing things in your world, like handling hot liquids, uh, handling knives, um, maybe carrying things up and down stairs. So you may need to lean on some people there to help you with that. It's a thing, right? <clears throat> so, again, visual neglect, completely treatable, right? Again, what is the outcome you are going to have? That is that is a discussion between you and your clinical team, right? I can't say exactly what the outcome will look like because all I can say is you've had a stroke. You might be watching this because you've had visual problems, Um Right, so now you might also have dry eyes, right? So for whatever reason, um, you have dry eyes, right? Um, and that could be caused by weakness in your facial and eyelid muscles. That could be, you know, your eyes are staying open when you asleep. Uh, it could be, you know, a couple of issues. Again, that is something you're going to have to uh, discuss with your clinical team. Last one is light sensitivity. That's the one I'm personally noticing on my end is light sensitivity. Right? So, and that, that's a bit of an issue at times, right? Like when you want to go do shopping, like let's just pick the easy one. Groceries, right? Everyone needs those things called groceries. Unfortunately, fluorescent lights are cheap and light up a lot of space. Hence, they're everywhere. Well, I get into a fluorescent light. Um, I'm debating. Now, I personally hate baseball caps. Don't like how they fit. Don't like how they wear. Um, not never been a fan of the baseball cap. I'm probably gonna have to start wearing one. Yay! I, I just never liked baseball caps, um, so I'm probably gonna have to start wearing a hat of some kind. I don't know what that's gonna be yet, but I'm gonna figure something out. Um, that being said, you may also encounter you might need tinted glasses, right? Um, and exactly what color they are, the, the grade of the tint, um, how the glasses fit. That's, again, something you need to discuss with your healthcare practitioners. And specifically an eye doctor that deals specifically with brain structure, you know, and, and has a hopefully a practice built on working with people that are post-concussion, brain injury, and stroke. Now, other things you need to consider is, are you able to drive, Right. Um, are you able to go up and down stairs? Are you able to do whatever you would normally do? And I realize there's a lot of things there that you need to you need to be able to see to do, like work, right? So I've been sighted all my life. I've worn glasses since I think grade five or six. Um, so the majority of my life, but without vision, without effective vision, um, there's not a lot you can do, right? If you've been sighted for the most of your life, all of a sudden now you're going to be looking at, you know, what are you doing for work, right? Um, now with disturbances in vision, such as double vision or light sensitivity, right? Are you able to go back to work? Are you not able to go back to work? What type of accommodations and modifications need to be made for you, right? Things like that. So basically when it comes to vision issues, right? You may encounter any, all, some, or none of these, right? So, you know, do you have double vision? Do you have what's called midline shift? Again, where your midline of your body's not here, it now shifts over here. Do you have visual neglect? Do you have depth perception? Do you have distance issues? Do you have color perception? Do you have hallucinations? Um, do you have the ability, inability to recognize common items? Like, you, okay, go grab me your phone. Uh, what's that? Right? What is that? I don't know what a phone is, right? Hey, go get me the spoon. Uh, I don't know what that is, right? Do you have the visual field loss, right? And if you have visual field loss, which version do you have, right? Left, right, up, down, right? Do you have a small little dead spot? Is it, do you have just tunnel vision, right? Do you have, you know, other issues that might present themselves that, you know, 
your eyes are just wobbly and, and don't want to stop moving? Do you have double vision? Do you have, you know, both eyes can't move together? So again, trying to go grocery shopping must be difficult to walk, scan, track, select, right? Walk, scan, track, select. Well, that's going to be extremely difficult because if you have double vision, just walking and scanning is going to be an issue. Now throw in scanning and tracking, right? Now, when I say scan, I mean look for something. When I say track, I mean found the thing I'm looking for, but as my position in the world changes, because I'm walking down the aisle, I now have to change where I'm looking at to keep my line of sight on or near that can of tomatoes or that box of cereal or whatever, right? Um, and then throw double vision into that. I, I can't even imagine uh, how disrupting that would be. But... Just keep in mind, you can have vision issues post-stroke, and I'm going to encourage you that if you are noticing some kind of vision issue post-stroke, you need to reach out to your appropriate medical practitioners and get to the right type of eye doctor or neurologist that can assist you uh, with uh, dealing with it. Because it is treatable to an extent. Exactly the outcome you're going to have, I honestly don't know. But that being said... If you do find vision issues, please immediately reach out to people you need to. And if you do happen to either know someone or you personally are going through the throes of the recovery in your journey from a stroke, please like, share, subscribe. Hey, would love it if you subscribe. Make comments. If there's something you want to see me cover, please leave a comment down below. Um, and if you have been enjoying what you've been watching coming up on three months in three days, uh, my journey post-stroke and just some general stroke information again like share subscribe share with your friends recommend to people make comments down below and if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke that being facial droop inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all slurred stuttering speech inappropriate word usage for situation or context inability to smile equally or effectively or at all might have covered that one but then again i have a bad memory at times um, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.